<laughs> okay. Um. Let's jump right into it. I don't know how to do an intro right now. I know it has been a long time. I know I don't know how many of you are listening, but listen, I'm back. Never off the boat, season three, episode one. Let's go. I'm still me. I'm still pinch on, and I hope you guys are still doing fine. This is my podcast where I talk about being a Chinese living in Estonia, a small, cute, Northern European country. I talk about things that interest me. I talk about my life. I talk about my reflections. Yeah, I mean, the summer. I mean, the summer was great. The summer was awesome. Look, the setup. I know. I know. For those of you who are not watching this on YouTube, the setup is kind of shabby right now. It's、uh, it's random. It's primitive, but I like it. I mean, a camping chair. There's another empty camping chair next to me, waiting for the next guest to pop up. And in middle of this two camping chair, there is a bucket, and on top of the bucket, there's some wooden plank that holds my laptop computer, and also the arm that extend out to hold the microphone that I'm using to record this podcast. And over the white wall behind me, there is a painting I just freshly painted, which is not entirely dry yet. The interpretation of that painting is up to you. I like it. I thought I wasn't gonna like it, but after I hung it up, yeah, I like it. It's a orange background, and on the upper left corner, there is a dark, illuminating circle, radiating dark energy out. You know what? That's already too much information. Either that's dark information, <laughs> either that's dark light, or it's not dark light. It's not up to me. I I did use black as a primary color, or the only color to portray that dark circling thing. But is black dark? And that's up to you. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say too much. I already said too much, I guess. But yeah, I love this setup. Maybe I'm gonna upgrade. Maybe I won't. But right now, I'm happy with what I have. This is a new office space where I'm gonna do a lot of my projects that I don't think would be appropriate for an apartment. I can do woodwork here, for example. I can do other handicrafts. I can record podcast without,、uh, you know. Uh, getting on my neighbor's nerve, or getting on anybody's nerve, and、um, it's just an awesome space in downtown. I can even meet people here, do all kinds of stuff. Endless possibility. I rented a place maybe a month ago, and、I、just finished painting up the walls. Like it used to be chaotic colors. There was one red wall here, and over there, there's like a beige color wall, and then the black wall, and then a beige color wall over there on the opposite side of me. So it was kind of like too much color for me. I bought two bucket of paint, one black one, one white one, and I painted like、uh, two walls white and two walls black. Now they look kind of kind of edgy, I would say. It's nice. It's 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 very nice right now. It's empty. It's clean. But I think I I figure I don't need a lot. I will put in some more、uh, handicraft tools when I get to it. And、uh, over there, I'll put a big table where I can do some writing on. But that's about it. Like that's that's all the equipment I need. Maybe I'll get a pull up bar and install it on the wall so I can do some pull up. Over here in the winter, if I don't feel like going out, but yeah, now I'm a man with an office in downtown Tallinn, Estonia. I feel rather accomplished at a young age of 29. Yeah, the summer. Where do I start? Very great summer. Very hot. Tallinn have never seen so hot summer. I think in a while now. At least in the years that I have lived here, this is one of the hottest 
It was very hot, very dry. The sun was always out. I went to Italy, Sicily, to be specific, for a week to travel with my girl. We stayed in some fancy ass hotel, which was super nice. I never got to like living good hotel before. When I travel, it was used to be it used to be only Airbnb and shitty hotel that I can find as cheap as possible. You know, I was such a budget traveler. And、uh, this is the first time I get to experience a five star, like really luxurious hotel with good customer service, where people actually give a shit about your needs and、uh, and and your your preferences. So I enjoy that little bit of pampering. I don't know if it's because of aging or is it something else, but I think I could appreciate this as well now. Like. I still want to do more Airbnb. I still want to travel, maybe sleep on people's couches, couch surfing. Is that what it's called? I still want to do that, but at the same time, I think I want to mix in a little bit more, like luxurious, like good service, expensive things that I didn't really appreciate before. You know, it's just a very different experience, and. I think there's no good or bad in either options when you're traveling. I did travel with caution. Got my COVID vaccination. I was wearing mask a lot in Italy. So yeah, I think we're gonna be staying with COVID for a while. I'm not going back to China because if I am going, I get quarantined for at least 14 days mandatorily in a hotel. Once I land in the country, and then after that, it depends on the situation of your home city. I might need to be, for for instance, right now, I need to be additionally quarantined for fourteen days at home, like home quarantine with my parents, for fourteen more days after the mandatory fourteen days in the hotel. So that's in total a month of restricted movement, and I'm not really into that, to be honest with you. I think that's not worth it. I do wanna, I do wanna visit my parents. I do wanna see how China is doing right now, but like the thing is, I just don't know. I just don't know if I can handle fourteen days in solitude in a hotel room. I'm being, you know, watching some videos on YouTube and、uh, other social medias, seeing people's experience of like getting quarantined in hotel. It's kind of like a Like a lottery ticket situation, you don't really know what you're getting into before you get into the hotel. You just you just don't know where you're gonna be assigning to. You can't choose a hotel. That's a that's the thing. Like the state or the government or whoever, right? They assigned you a hotel once you land in China, and you don't know if it's gonna be good. It could be super good, but it could be super shitty as well. So you're up to the I guess it depends on the luck, and then you get to stay there for fourteen days by yourself. All the food are going to be delivered to your door front, and you're restricted in your movement. You can't exit the door of your hotel room. So that fourteen days, you're locked up. You're locked up in a in a good prison room. Basically, it's essentially. Let's be honest. You can't go out, right? All the trash that you produce, you can like leave at the front door, but you cannot go out. That's the thing. So yeah, that's not fun. That doesn't even sound fun. I saw people like trying to make the most out of it,、uh, working out and you know making challenges. Like、uh, this one photographer I saw, he was using this opportunity to quit smoking, which was you know adding a little bit of a, a challenging factor or a little bit of.、A, Meaning, I guess, to this fourteen days of uh, uh, of limited、uh, mobility, but still, like, I just don't think at this point, like, I, I'm really looking into that. So, with that said,、um, I'm primarily gonna be traveling inside of Europe.、Uh, there's there's some limitations as for like what we can do at the moment, even inside the European Union, but. The movement are largely free. You could go around, but just be cautious. Just be careful. Not only for yourself. Even if I'm like vaccinated, I still want to like just make sure that I'm not like、uh, be responsible. I might be young. I might not be 
affected by the virus, but it, you know, it could jeopardize other people's life. And uh, um, with that in mind, I guess I'm traveling with the amount of caution that I can I can say that is you know that is considerate. So yeah, I did a little bit of traveling. Uh, spent a lot of time outside. Had enough sun. Had a lot of sun. I peeled some skin even because there was uh, some overexposure. My skin started to peel off in Sicily. It was, it was tough, but it was necessary. I feel like a new person after I pull off a like, layer of skin coming back to, to Pirita, telling Estonia in my apartment. I was just like peeling skin. And for like a week straight, I could like pick up pieces of like dried up skin on my bed, which was... Hear, hear me out. Nasty, but very refreshing because you feel like a newborn baby with a new skin. And uh, I'm also trying new things. Uh, I'm still, I'm still teaching Chinese. I'm still teaching English. I'm still doing personal training. But on the side, uh, I'm doing more handiwork, um, which I enjoy a lot. And this new office space I rented, it's going to accommodate more tools, or more noisy tools. And I don't think the neighbors are gonna appreciate in the apartment building, so I can do those here. I can, I can do metal work. I can do woodworking, sawing, beating. I don't know what's that called. <laughs> beating, hammering, a lot of those things that are that's just like you know not so nice to do in the in the office, uh, in the home, <clears throat> in the apartment. Sorry. But here, limited, unlimited opportunities. I like that. Uh, I think I, if anything, I regret. I think I should have gotten an office like this a long time ago, so I could have, you know, done more with my free time when it comes to woodworking. I always wanted more, but I always feel like, you know, I need the, I need the place for it. I need a place to house a tool and get it going. I didn't get enough access. I didn't get enough uh, practicing uh, woodworking practicing before, because I always feel like you know the apartment wasn't the place for it. But now with this place, very good. I'm pleased. Um, what else? What else? What else do I want to talk about today? Hmm. Uh, I was just like painting the. Uh, I was spray spray painting this uh, this lovely little painting behind me, and uh, I started to think because it was it was starting to smell a lot. Uh, the spray paint, even though I was wearing a mask, the spray paint was like kind of kind of giving out a nasty smell. And I started to think about the the senses, right? You know, like the the basic senses of us: the sight, the eyesight, the smell. The ability to smell, the taste, the hearing, the touches. And I think for me, one of the most important sense, senses, one of the most important senses would probably be the ability to smell. Um, I used to tell people that I, I feel that I have ability, a very, very good ability to smell things. Um, maybe, you know. I don't know, like, you guys know, like, the COVID take away your ability to taste or smell. I don't remember, but, like, that could be one of the reasons. That could be one of the biggest reasons that I don't think I want to get COVID is because I, I really, I really value my ability to smell things. Like, I don't know about you, but if I approach somebody, if I get to know somebody, a new person specifically, like their their smell or something that can help me identify them in the future. I even base largely about my preference on the person or my liking to the person based on the smell. Like it's very accurate. I'm not trying to look. I'm not trying to sound like um, superstitious or inconsiderate here, but I really think smell give me a good idea about the person or if we would get along like it's not about good or bad i'm not saying some people smells nasty and some people smells good like it's not that 
It's just your smell. Everybody have a unique smell, in my opinion, to them, and it's very special to them. And if I like it or not, doesn't necessarily mean、uh, they smell good or bad. It's just a preference. It's like there's all different colors out there, and my favorite color is baby blue, right? And doesn't mean baby blue is better than all the other color, but I like it. So it comes to the smell of people. Like I have my preference. I smell it. I might never smelt it before because, like I said, everybody's smell is unique to themselves. It's never like entirely the same between two person. So when I first smell a person, like when the when the smell comes through, like I instantly kind of get a feeling of it, the person, their personality, their way of life. Uh, their intensity of emotion,、uh, their way of communication with you,、uh, their potential link with your life—all those things kind of like all packed in a in the smell. So, like, so the smell, so the smell of the person really tells me a lot about how I would probably. My stomach is growling. How to probably enjoy hanging out with you or not hanging out with you, and that's the thing. Like, and also like, every single time when I think about childhood, the first thing that comes up to my mind is not really like any solid events, any solid things. Yeah, like some very significant moment I can remember. Based on the vision, there is like pictures. There is like all this imagery that comes up to my head when I think about those things. But there are those are like really significant moments, and there are not so many of them. Maybe in the past twenty nine years, there's no more than a hundred, right? A hundred, two hundred imagery like that. Short clips of events, things that I can recall based on those imagery, those visions, right? In, in your head. But there's like so much more smells that are stored in my head. If I want to think about like that elementary school, the the smell that I can remember right now is the smell of、um, of a very specific brand of of ramen noodle, instant ramen noodle.、Uh, the reason why it's special is because it's packaged like so small and so. So small and so tiny, and it's supposed to be eaten as a snack. So you don't really, you know, like the normal instant ramen noodle. You kind of, you know, pour boiling water on top, and then you eat it soft with soup and all that, right? But this one, this one is supposed to be eaten like raw and just dry, right? It's kind of like crisps. It's kind of like chips, you know. Like you just break it apart in the plastic cover, in its plastic par- packaging. Squeeze it, get it into pieces. There's a small package of like seasoning in there, which is powder shape. You open that little small package up, pour it in there, and then you shake it. So all the powders, all the seasoning powder, will stick to those like you know small pieces of、uh, of broken ramen noodle. And you pick it out, or you like, you know, just chug it. Ah、oh, man, it's making my mouth water just to think of it. But that was、uh, how you would eat it, and also inside of this specific brand of instant ramen noodle, you get like one of those playing card, kind of like Pokemon card. But this series of card, which was super popular amongst kids my age at that time, was was based on a book, a Chinese classic book called Shui Hu. It is a book about one hundred eight,、uh, I guess. Dudes, a hundred and eight dudes who live in Ming Dynasty were trying to fight the government. They were like、uh, rebellion, rebellious, rebellion people. I don't know,、uh, dissident,、uh, protesters.、Uh, yeah, they were dissident, political dissidents who formed a little group and then lead the mil-、uh, lead an army. 
of soldiers and the farmers to fight against uh, the government. And uh, in this car series, the hundred and eight character in that book were all like cartoonized. They are all animated into this like you know cute little cartoon characters, and then they have their own special powers. And there is like a rank to it, one to a hundred and eight, and everybody have their their bar of attack and defense and、uh, and wisdom. Those are their like ability, right? And they're all assigning like a specific score to them from zero to a hundred. Based on their character, they have a unique, like I guess, ability set up, and it's all this three measurement:、uh, attack, defense, and the wisdom. And people can use this card to play games, like fight against each other, or just playing card game, like any other cards, right? It's super cool, and every kids want to collect all one hundred and eight of them, but it's really hard to do so because the production of certain heroes, of certain dissidents in this one hundred and eight dudes. Are very limited. Like you never come across those. You can buy like a a, a pack, a, like a whole container of this ramen noodle, and you wouldn't get even one because you just don't make that much. It actually happened. There was some rich kid who would buy like a carton box, which has like maybe forty packs of this ramen noodle, and he would just give out other kids in the class all the ramen noodle, but only collect all the carts. That was a fanatic time. I remember having like stack of it, even though my collection was never impressive. But yeah, to think of that time, to think of that time, I could recall the first thing I could recall is the smell of that instant noodle. It's like so branded, curved, carved into my head. I think of like class one to class five. That was a smell. I come to my head. The sound of the the packaging open up, and then boom, you got hit with that very specific instant noodle smell. And you open up that package of seasoning, and boom, that chemical supposed to be barbecue flavor sauce. Man, it just goes straight to your nose. You put it in, shake it up, and you take it out. Mm, 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 mm. And that smell is all over your mouth. Yeah, that's a, that's the thing that I remember about about class one to class five, the first five years of elementary school, is that smell. And now, being here, like in Estonia, for a while, like I was, I was wondering if. Is it like my ability to smell went away? Because like everything smells so fresh. Like if you go out, like the air is so fresh. Like you barely smell anything. It's just a freshness, right? There's not so much like, like scenting the air. If you walk back home, like in China or even in Japan, like you always get to smell something. Either street food vendors doing like, you know, screwers. Like barbecues, shashlik kind of things on the street, or, or there's some kind of people passing by because it's packed. It's always packed in Asia, and people have all kinds of body smells.、Um, there's more, I guess, smelling plants. I don't know what's it called. Like some trees have their own smells, right? Some flower have their own smell. Some dogs, pets, animals got their smell. So, like back home, I never felt like I was left alone with just the air, the fresh air. There was always something infused in the air. You always get to smell something, right? But here, like often time, especially because I live in Pirita and it's just residential area without like any really business establishment or people walking around all that much. It's just people living there. And it's residential buildings. It's quiet. It's clean. It's got nothing going on besides like health track that you know you can run on. So when I go out, I don't smell anything. It's just fresh air. For a while, I was kind of to think of it. I guess there was a time that I was kind of frustrated. I don't get to smell anything. But in retrospect, after all this time of living here, and I look back, 
it, that was a unique smell because it's not something that I can I can just decide on my own. Like you know, today I'm gonna smell this and I'm gonna remember this. I'm gonna you know maybe in the future think about this, and I'm gonna this this smell is gonna come back to me. No, like I don't get to decide what gets stored in the head. That's what I found out right now because if I think about the first a couple of years in Estonia, this smell of fresh air. They do come back, you know. I didn't decide to to store them in my head because, at that time, like I said, I didn't even know this was a smell. All I was telling myself, or I was thinking, was this is an absence of smell. This is a lack of smell. That's why all I can smell is the fresh air. But no, no, it seems to be the other way around. It seems to be also full of smell, even though it is fresh. It's empty. It's sterile.、Um, it's nonetheless a smell. The emptiness become its fullest. Is that what is what is like? I don't know how to describe it, but that emptiness, that empty freshness of the air in Pirita or in Estonia in general, that is a smell that I remembered. That is a smell like I. I thought I might, I might have been judgmental. I might have been a little bit too early. Was jumping into the conclusion, saying that you know that empty freshness wasn't really a smell. Yeah, I was wrong, because it is. It's actually very full and it's very packed with sentiment and packed with feeling. And now, if I look back, and I, I close my eyes and、I、think about it, man, that smell. <laughs> right now, I can only smell the spray paint. But that smell of early autumn, walking in Kadri Work,、uh, next to Pirita Promenade, next to Tallinn University, next to my rental apartment from two thousand five, two thousand fifteen to two thousand seventeen, like that fresh smell of nothingness. That's what defined my experience in Estonia in the couple of years, in the first couple of years when I landed here. Like I remember it, you know. That's super cool. So like, yeah. Yeah, that wasn't empty. You know what I mean? That wasn't empty at all. All right, today I don't want to. I don't want to drag this along too much. I just wanted to quickly do an episode、uh, to get this thing back on track again. And、uh, later, I'm gonna talk more about like maybe the book I'm talk I'm working on, and I will starting like guest back on the on the podcast because you know I want to show off the new, want to show off the new office.、Mm, once I start to do more handy work over here, like woodworking and other stuff with my hand, I'm gonna show you what I have been doing.、Um, but yeah. It's it's just like always. This podcast is not. It's nothing specific. It's about my life. It's about my life in Estonia, and I'm for a while. I don't think I'm going anywhere. I got my permanent resident permit in Estonia, so I'm gonna be sticking around, which is awesome. In this turbulent time of COVID pandemic, and I get a place that I can call home here, it's great. All right, hope you guys stay safe,、uh, and I'll see you. In the, I'll see you. I'll see you in the next one. All right, peace out.